Self-driving robo-taxis are already on the road in two U.S. cities and could soon be coming to a place near you. So this morning, we're taking a closer look at what to expect in our series. We're calling it American Innovation on the transformative role of science and technology in our lives. It is here. One leading company is Waymo. Its app-based its app-based, rather, ride-hailing service has been on the road for more than six years now and currently averages 10,000 passenger rides a week. Waymo just announced a partnership with Uber. Chris Van Cleve climbed into the back seat for a driverless ride. Robert Stone and Sheila Zaglowski are trying out Waymo's ride-hailing service that just expanded to include their Tempe, Arizona retirement community. Their car arrives without a person in the driver's seat. We love it. It's just, it's going to replace a car for us before, sooner than later. In 2018, CBS Mornings cameras were the first allowed to ride in a fully autonomous Waymo. Then the service was limited to a select few early adopters, and each gas powered minivan arrived with a human safety driver on board. Waymo does intend to completely remove the safety driver eventually, so there'll be no one up front at all. After more than a million driverless miles and no reported injuries, Waymo is seen as the industry leader, having expanded its footprint in Phoenix, adding service in San Francisco, and soon to parts of Los Angeles. Those minivans have been replaced with a fleet of all-electric Jaguars. The Waymo driver never gets drowsy. It uh, doesn't get distracted. It is something that is attentive all the time. Adam Lenz is Waymo's head of sustainability. Would you say the cars perform as well or better than a human driver? I would say that I really trust this technology and that when you're in the car, you feel entirely safe and it's a great user experience. But the technology is still learning. I think there's opportunities to continue to build a better service for our riders and we continue to do that. In March, 68% of drivers told AAA they were afraid of autonomous vehicles. Though truly self-driving cars are operating in only a handful of cities across the country. It's really impressive what Waymo is doing. The journalist Tim Stevens covers the auto industry. If you compare that to any other ride-sharing company like an Uber or a Lyft that are serving basically coast to coast at this point, it's really a tiny impression. Waymo is owned by Google's parent company, Alphabet. Waymo has been given a lot of runway this far and a lot of R&D dollars to develop this you know, truly incredible technology. But it is still a long way away from being a truly viable, independent, profitable business. And so the question on the minds of a lot of people is, how much more patience does Alphabet have for this business? Here in San Francisco, the city council denied Waymo a permit to add a parking garage after concerns from the community and labor unions that autonomous vehicles could cost jobs. Using the Waymo app, we tried it for ourselves, taking a ride around Phoenix for about the same cost as calling an Uber. You pretty quickly sitting back here forget there's no one actually driving the vehicle other than there's no driver making awkward small talk while we're going from point A to point B. There are a few little things that are different. It can be a little hesitant and it's taken a couple of turns, maybe not the way a human driver would, but nothing that was unsafe. What we've seen is that people experiencing the technology really leads to people using it more and having trust and the technology to get them safely to where they need to go. Two people who don't need to be convinced, Sheila and Robert. I'm 83 years old and I'm thinking about retiring from driving and uh, this is just a great way to go. I can get rid of my car and depend on it. You don't have any uh, kind of mixed feelings about the fact there's no one driving the car? That's the exciting part. <laughs> It's fun and it's safe and you don't have to tip. <laughs> Riding into a tipless and driverless future. For CBS Mornings, I'm Chris Van Cleve in Phoenix. Yeah. All right, Waymo. They've been working on it for a long time. Yeah. Based on what we saw there, I thought it looks pretty good. Sign me up. I'm yeah. good with it. Are yeah. you? Yeah. yeah. Think uh, about how many times you got in the back of a car yes. and you've been distracted, you fell asleep. You or you had a bad driver. Or you had a bad driver. Mm -hmm. Or the driver won't stop talking to yes. you. You find a way to distract yourself and not yes. pay attention. It's the same thing. Well, you I just think, have a safer driver. I think it'll help with traffic because so many drivers at red lights are just sitting on their phones like this, and then That's it turns a good green, point. And everyone yes. has to honk, and yes. now the computer just goes. The only thing it doesn't make up for, 
when you get in a car and you're in a little bit of a rush and you lean up there and you say, hey, I got to get to the airport in about 45 minutes, that human driver knows exactly what you're doing. Yes. You might push the limit a little bit. And sometimes the human driver, yes. the human driver knows a couple of little shortcuts here and there that the computer does not recommend. Yeah. That oh, just give it time. To me. Give that it just happened time. to me the other day. Could we go a little bit faster? Then I went, well, I want to get there alive. Yeah.